Students should recognize that their diagram for the first configuration, that is if your first configuration had one pin here and one over here, and one was plus, one was minus, resembles the electric field pattern for a set of opposite point charges. So let's just, you either had it set up like this or you could also have had it set up like this. Students should also recognize that the electric field is strongest near the electrodes where the line density is the greatest for your electric field lines. Small differences between the student drawings and the expected pattern are inconsequential as long as you have the following key elements. The shape of your equipotential lines is generally consistent with the configuration. The points of the equipotential lines are labeled, you have to label, and are all the same voltage. The equipotential lines are in equal increments of voltage. The electric field lines, now we switch over to the field, they have to be perpendicular to the equipotential lines. And your electric field lines will be closer together near the electrodes. Now when you set up your conducting paint like this, and you were looking for the equipotential lines in this area here, you should come up with a drawing like that. That closely resembles the uniform electric field between oppositely charged plates. The electric field strength is uniform at all points between the plates, but it varies due to edge effects at the edges. Your students may have small differences between their drawing and the expected pattern. Don't worry about it, basically for the same re reasons as your first configuration, except what will be different this time. The electric field shape and that the electric field lines are closer near the outer corners of each electrode. That's your edge effect going on. Possible sources of error. Here's the big one. Not having firm connections between the electrodes and the conductive pin. You could also be using an old battery, but you should have tested that in the beginning with the multimeter. And you may not be able to use the conductive paper from last year's experiments. All of these may be present if you find that your electric uh, potentials don't seem to make sense. The last source of error is that the multimeter readings have small fluctuations, so you have to do some guesswork as to the final digit of the reading. The equipotential lines, well, they can show these fluctuations, but that shouldn't have a big effect on you.